Hello and good morning. My name is Kevin Snyder of Snyder Law and I'm an estate and elder law planning attorney here in Irvine and this is your nugget of knowledge. Today we're going to be talking about approaching the conversation of managing finances when you have an aging parent and how to best go about doing that. But before we dive into that, I just want to remind you how you can get in touch with us if you have any questions about what we're talking about today or what uh, you've seen on some of our videos in the past um, or you have some uh, additional ideas about things that we can talk about. Anything that you want to reach out to us for, you can simply go to www.asksnyderlaw.com. That's www.asksnyderlaw.com and you can schedule a time to talk with us. Glad to chat with you. Uh, of course, you can just simply also, uh, if you're comfortable with it, just uh, put a comment in the Facebook feed here on this video and happy to address it as well. Okay, so our topic of the day, approaching the conversation about managing finances with aging parents um, is an important one because a lot of uh, people that have aging parents are finding themselves in uh, a situation where it is necessary for them to step in and have these conversations. But it's difficult. And it might seem straightforward, of course, at first, but it, it is really difficult because there's a lot of things to coordinate here. Uh, what's difficult about it? One, your mom, dad, uh, might be disorganized in how they are uh, managing their, their finances. Maybe they were organized at one point, but now they let things go. Or they're a widow and they just never have been used to managing finances in the past and they don't know the first thing about doing so. And so they do what? They, do, they just ignore. And we've seen that situation happen a few different times. Uh, memory loss plays into the equation as well. Some of our parents are subjected to memory loss and they're going through early onset of uh, levels of dementia and now they don't know exactly what they've done or uh, that is um, affecting how they're getting organized. They don't know when bills are due and they can't communicate that to you either because they tend to forget. So and thirdly there's a role reversal issue right there here you are the child that they've raised and they've spent their life raising you and telling you what to do and guiding you um, and so now you're trying to guide them and help them and but it's difficult it interrupts the parent-child relationship um, and oftentimes what can happen is that uh, there's a, a hesitance or um, a, a unwillingness to accept that role on behalf of the parent and and then what, what do we do as kids, we harbor a little bit of resentment that mom and dad just aren't listening to us. We know exactly what we're talking about and why can't they see what's going on? Uh, so we have that going on as well. And lastly, there's a lack of information. Uh, and this has to do a little bit with uh, what's uh, the organizational component that I talked about, but it's also um, connected to the idea that parents just don't want to share with their kids uh, more details about their finances. They're perfectly fine with sharing that information with a financial advisor, maybe an attorney, uh, or other people, just not their kids. Why? Because they weren't raised in that generation where they shared that type of information. That's not part of their parental DNA. And so uh, they're not going to be necessarily willing to share that information with you. It's private information. Uh, you'll find that out when the time comes. Uh, but of course, that is uh, what we're trying to avoid and getting in front of. So how do you deal with these obstacles? Well, like with all things that are difficult in life, the best way to deal with an obstacle like this is be proactive and get in front of it. Uh, if you're proactive in get, getting in front of it, then you can best get the information that you need and get the education that you need so you know what options that you have available in moving forward so that uh, as your parents age and some of these uh, things become more realities, such as your parents' uh, health uh, declines more or uh, sadly they, they're, they, do, uh, they are diagnosed with dementia, uh, whether it's Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or some other unidentifiable form of dementia, uh, and their memory loss and ability to function starts to pr progress that you have things uh, in place and you have a system in place uh, that can uh, go into effect. And of course, the bonus of being proactive is that your parents have the ability now while they can to establish their wishes and get things organized the way that they want and to be able to have that conversation with the family or the people that are going to be decision makers so things are clear. And so when we do have the, those periods of time in the future, when we have the, the crisis situation, when things do start to happen, that there's clarity. Uh, there's clarity in your parents' designs and wishes, and there's clarity in function and action of what to do. Of course, if you're not going to be proactive, the second best way is to uh, confront the situation and the problems and not avoid them. 
because when we avoid things naturally and put it off to the side, that's not helping anybody. The problem's still there. We're just choosing not to recognize it. Uh, so confront the problems, uh, get the help that you need. Here at Snyder Law, we're a resource center for our clients. So if it's something that uh, we can't handle, we're going to connect um, our clients with somebody who is a specialist in that, that field. So sometimes the, the first step might not be, hey, rush out and talk to an estate planning, elder law planning a, attorney like me uh, for purposes of planning. Uh, the first incremental step might be, hey, let's just get some information about some other resources and people that can assist uh, with this topic. And when it comes to uh, fi uh, financially getting your parents organized or managing finances, a good potential resource would be a professional fiduciary that could help with very simple day-to-day -day operations like bill pay. In the situation where your parents might not be willing to allow you uh, to do something like that, they might be a little bit more willing to talk to a, another person about it, another professional uh, about it. And even in a situation where they're willing to talk to you about it, maybe you just don't have the bandwidth to do that. Uh, so a professional fiduciary, somebody to assist with day-to-day uh, -day bill pay and managing finances could be uh, a good potential uh, solution there and a next step towards the ultimate goal of getting them better planned altogether so that you don't uh, end up in crisis planning. But if you are in that crisis moment, of course, it's super important uh, to uh, get the advice that you're going to need to manage through that. That's something that um, a good estate planning and elder law planning attorney can help you with and something that we help clients with uh, and families with um, all the time. So no matter what stage your parents are in, it's important to address these situations. Again, earlier, earlier is always better because if we wait, time is not our friend and problems tend to arise. What kind of problems can we, uh, there be if you wait? Well, you might missed opportunities in planning, uh, number one. It could be too late to, to plan. Your, your parents are incapacitated. Now we can't do planning, and you have to go to court for a conservatorship. Or, of course, your parents have passed away, and now we're dealing with uh, all the pitfalls of, of probate afterwards, and it's, too, it's just too late. Uh, a financial drain on your, your parents' uh, resources uh, without planning. Uh, there's the emotional stress of dealing with the situation with your parents because you know, they're going to age and while we want our parents to live forever and to be the same people that they always been, the reality is that that's not going to be the case, sadly, and the situation is only going to get worse if uh, not ad addressed and you're going to have a lot of emotional stress as a result of that and so is your family, which leads to strained relationships with other family members. All the kids get along and, until there's a crisis. And that's because of emotions. We're human beings, and, um, and emotions play differently with different individuals. We're able to handle stress at different levels, and we all have different perceptions and beliefs of how we are going to care for our, our parents. And the time to have those crucial conversations is not in a moment of crisis. And what tends to happen during the crisis is, and we're ha trying to have those crucial conversations, and there is no plan, is that that's where there are arguments and disagreements. When emotions run high, things are said that we later regret and so on and so forth, you have these strained relationships and fractured relationships sometimes that are um, irreparable uh, in the future. Um, and of course, there's a perception of undue influence the longer that we wait. If we wait to plan at a point where, hey, it's, it's unclear whether mom or dad really understand what's going on, they're really super forgetful, uh, is somebody going to be able to come back later and say, hey, wait a minute, uh, you, you kind of guided mom and dad into doing it your way, and I have a problem with that. And so we see these issues that come up later in litigation, in, uh, in estate litigation, where family members are fighting over the issue of whether or not mom and dad actually understood what was going on. Of course, the list of problems goes, goes on beyond that. So what can we do to get away from the problems? I talked about um, you know, getting started, but it's a difficult conversation. I talked about this before, crucial conversations. How do we do that? One great idea that's worked for me personally and other of our clients is talk about your own journey in estate planning. Offer that up to your parents. You open up. They're going to be willing to uh, open back up. Uh, to you uh, more uh, more likely than not, right? So you make the offer of this is what we did and see we're showing you um, uh, something um, important to us, something that's detailed and what they might consider private and it'll give them that safe space and forum to share with you. Uh, or, you know, you can just point to a number of things in the news, uh, different celebrities that have been in the news in the last few years and the pitfalls uh, that their families are incurring in the aftermath of their deaths or incapacity or um, crisis moments uh, as a result of poor planning. And celebrities are no different than any of us. The only difference uh, is that they have more wealth, uh, a lot of them. Some of them they don't, uh, but uh, a lot of them do. And that just 
uh, touches on some tax issues, but all the other stuff is the same. Uh, when it comes to you know, family infighting, um, disagreements over wishes, uh, and uh, things like that. So you can just point to some examples. All you have to do is go on Google and do a search for celebrities and estate planning, and you're going to get a ton of different stories. Um, so you can use that as a way to kind of get the conversation jump started. If you want some other suggestions, happy to share. Like I said, reach out to us, uh, www.asksnyderlaw.com, and you can set aside some time for us to chat or simply call us at 949-333-3702. Happy to talk to you. Okay, so I wish you uh, luck, all of you that are going through a difficult conversation with, with your parents in regards to managing finances. It isn't easy. Trust me, I know, and my thoughts are with you. And I look forward to talking to you. All right, have a great week, everyone. Keep being amazing.